We want to bring in Ashley Banfield, now host of News Nation's Banfield. And Ashley, yet another mass shooting. You know, I want to talk to you about what the parents are going through. But first, you know, I don't want to ignore what we just heard there from Senator Chris Murphy asking, what are we doing? I mean, we had another mass shooting where 10 people were killed a week and a half ago. Now we're talking about, as the senator said, you know, another another elementary school shooting. And, and this is just tragic. No matter what you feel about gun control, none of us want to see this loss of life. That's my senator. Um, Chris Murphy's my senator in Connecticut. Uh, that's my state, and that's where Sandy Hook happened. 40 minutes from my house, Sandy Hook. So, um, you know, when Sandy Hook happened, I was on the air. It broke on my show. And I immediately packed up from the anchor set in New York City, and I drove with a photographer to Sandy Hook and set up outside Sandy Hook. So what I'm seeing on the screen right now is extraordinarily reminiscent of what I saw in 2012. Um, it's identical. This is a playbook now that we can all follow. You'll get aerial shots of uh, law enforcement officers outside the elementary school as they start to process the dead. The bodies are still in there, Nicole. Those children's bodies are still in there. And they will be there for quite some time as those law enforcement officers stop, start dropping little orange cones all over that building where they find bullets and evidence and fragments and body parts of babies. We went through this in 2012. The emotion that you saw from Chris Murphy is real. It is felt by all of us, not just in the press who were there, not just the senators who represent. It is felt by everyone in America who had to stomach the fact that little children were blown to bits in their classroom, one after the other, by a teenager. Adam Lanza was a young man who went to that school, right? Adam Lanza killed his mother and then took off for the school. And this young man at 18, allegedly killing his grandmother and then going to the school. Adam Lanza killed himself. I am only assuming that maybe this young, uh, troubled individual at 18 maybe killed himself. I don't know. I know there's an exchange of gunfire, but Chris Murphy is right. What the hell are we doing? I am an immigrant to this country. This doesn't happen in Canada, where I'm from. I love my country. I am a citizen here. But I cannot sit by and continue to report on these stories. I lost it in Sandy Hook. I understand. I could that, barely yes. breathe. I could barely breathe. And here I am again, 10 years later, doing that same story at approximately the same time of day about the same exact thing. The same exact Nicole, thing. Nicole, I just don't even know what else to say. I know, it is It is so difficult. And, and that's one thing uh, when Senator Murphy was speaking, you know, it really does bring up so much trauma for so many people. And I think, you know, these mass shootings sadly have, have become something that, that just are. They've become, become something that just are, but we have to remember. And I think, you know, when you were describing the fact that those bodies are still in there, the bodies of of little children, because we know this school was enroll enrollment is only second through fourth grade. So we're talking about second graders, third graders, and fourth graders, as well as a teacher. And we know that their little bodies are still sitting on, on, on the floor. And that is so graphic, but I think sometimes we almost need to hear those details. So yeah. this doesn't become yeah, do. white noise. And yeah. it doesn't become something thank you. that we just move Th on from. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you for saying that, because one after another, we're becoming really sanitized. So that, oh, there's that news story again, another shooting. Let's just remember exactly what's happening this minute in this town of Uvalde, Texas, a, a state where I lived for five years and got to know well. There are little children's torn apart bodies, and I am sorry for being real here, but you can't just look at your television right now and say, how sad, another shooting. It's not just another shooting, it's another Sandy Hook. It's another catastrophe. You could say it's another 9-11. I mean, how much more are we gonna take of this until we actually do something? And I just wanna state something here that may have gone by very quickly. Ali, who was reporting earlier, Nicole mentioned that law enforcement told her that the girlfriend of this shooter yes. had said to law enforcement that she was going to finish the job. That's an investigation that's probably happening right now, because 
Who knows if this is just this one shooter, or if this was a cabal or a plan, or maybe a pair, or maybe a movement, or maybe a political idea. Right. Who, who knows what it was, but we've got to find out. And then we've got to take some kind of action. Republicans, Democrats alike, wake the hell up. This just has got to stop. It, it really does. Uh, you know, and Ashley, I know that you are a mom. You know, I want to talk about the parents and all this because this is truly a parent's absolute worst nightmare. Of course, they have a staging, you know, away from the school. But I think every frightened, panicked parent is going to immediately come to the school. How do you talk to your kids when something like this happens? Yeah, I think we all have to talk the same way. It doesn't even matter that I was 40 minutes away from Sandy Hook. I had to drive by my own kids elementary school to, to go and report on Sandy Hook. And that was hard, you know, because they were all locked down and I wanted to stop and ensure that they were okay. But this is an American story. This is not just a Uvalde story. This is not a Texas story. This is an American story. And every parent has to sit down and talk to their kids about what's blanketing the news, not just today, but it's going to be tomorrow and the next day and for several weeks, because this is a headline that just doesn't go away very quickly. And I don't know. I mean, I, I did what I could. I, I tried to tell my kids the reality that we're living in without terrifying them and destroying them. But how much reality, you know, can you impart on, on your kids without making sure that this reality isn't going to ruin them? Right. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really hard dance to, 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 to try to navigate with these children, but they've got to be aware. There's nothing more these kids can do that we haven't already done. We've made, you know, doors bulletproof, but Allie reported that uh, her witness said that he saw the shooter go around to a window. <laughs> well, how many bulletproof windows can you put into schools all over America? You can't. You've got to get to the root problem. There's, there's no more bubble wrapping or Kevlar wrapping that we can do with schools and children. We've just got to stop this insanity, this gun violence, this this teen angst, that the terror that these these teenagers are going through, and then the availability that they can do something about it with a weapon. And like you said, Ashley, this really is uh, an American problem. It, it, it appears to be uniquely American. I mean, right now we were talking about Uvalde, Texas, a week and a half ago. We were talking across the country to the Northeast in Buffalo, New York. We, we have really reported these mass shootings all over the country. Uh, and, and as you said, it, it, you know, sadly, it's the same scene pretty much every time. You know, fill in maybe minor details that are different. Um, so in this situation, Talk to us about the investigation. I know that you said that you were on the scene at Sandy Hook when this happened uh, in 2011. Very similar scenes, very, sadly. But talk about the investigation, where it stands right now, because, of, of course, this is such an, an immense investigation that will continue. Yeah, so it will take some time. And the, the horror that I'm just thinking about right now is the off-site location where all of the parents of all of those children who go to that elementary school are waiting to find out if they'll be reunited uh, with their children. And one by one, I, I remember it like it was yesterday, Nicole, but the, the parents that, that got word that they were not going to be reunited with their children. They watched all the other parents get notified and then leave that, that family reunification center. And they just kept waiting for their turn. And as that crowd got thinner and thinner, huh. Yeah, that, actually that gives me goosebumps. And I don't have children, but just thinking of, you know, as you see the crowd get smaller, and you know your absolute worst what they fears said. realized. Yeah, they, they they described it in detail, and I'm glad they did because everybody needs to know what's going on behind the scenes, right? It's not just a news story on cable today. It's it's someone's hell, and it's a lot of people's hell today. But actually, they said I, I'm that, so sorry. Um, yes. they, they waited. They waited for their turn, and ultimately realized, you know, uh, it took hours and hours of this hell for these parents to call before finally the, the tens and tens of, of people finally in that center um, were, you know, left and, and got their good news. And then eventually, you know, the new reality for the Sandy Hook parents set in, and that was that they were going to live their lives now with a horrifying new normal and right. try to change this for the rest of the country. And I can only imagine what they are thinking right now as they see, well, I, I guess, you know, what we've gone through, we've gone through in vain because all these parents are gonna go through the exact same thing again. You know, and Ashley, talk about that. I know that you, you have interviewed so many people. I know that you spoke with a first responder who had to make that horrible, horrible notification. You know, um, they, 
there were so many of them, right? Like this was just huge. Um, I, I got to be honest, I think the worst moment I went through other than those first few hours at Sandy Hook was watching a few days later as uh, a, a, a collection of um, hearses drove through the center of town with tiny caskets in them. You could see it. it like it was almost like it was a movie. It just, it didn't seem real. These hearses, one after the another, after another, and everybody, all the media, all of us who were gathered just fell absolutely silent um, from this image of these little coffins going by in these hearses. You could see the coffins through the window. And it was just, it was a parade of horrible, right? A parade of horribles, one after the other. You know, we were never let inside that, that school. That they, they raised the school, they demolished that school. Uh, my, my thought is that likely this school will ultimately be demolished as well. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's just so many things that these people are about to go through that, that the Sandy Hook parents can literally write the playbook for them, but, but they shouldn't have wow. to. They just and, and shouldn't They shouldn't. Have to. And it only gets worse. And I've been to the funeral of a child, and I can tell you it is one of the worst things seeing uh, that, that little casket. Ashley, talk about uh, the suspect, what we know so far. Uh, police authorities saying that he appears to have, have shot his grandmother, uh, hearing from authorities that his girlfriend threatening to, to finish what he started. Just talk to us about, about this suspect and, and what we know. I mean, we know that he's deceased, appears to have been shot uh, by a member of the SWAT team. Yeah, there will be a huge investigation into this, Nicole. Just the fact that he's dead doesn't mean that this isn't a, a huge police action, right? Because you don't know what else there is. You don't know if this girlfriend, who seems to know what is going on and seems to have a motive uh, to continue it, she will be a fountain of knowledge, hopefully. And who knows, there may be charges against that young woman if she helped, if she furthered any of this, if she was uh, a cheerleader for any of this. There may be some kind of, um, uh, you know, of conspirator charge that she will face for this. I have no idea if she's just spouting or if she actually did act, you know, help in the advancement of this, uh, this hideous demonic plot. Um, we know that there was a shootout from the witnesses prior to him entering the school. There was a shootout with authorities who were in pursuit, this according to witnesses, um, who were in pursuit of him after the uh, killing of his grandmother. And again, so much of this just parrots what happened with Adam Lanza. He killed his mother, he went right to the school, he shot out the windows of the, of the secure door in the front of the elementary school. He got in and he went, you know, specifically door to door and mostly for first graders. I don't know what this man's uh, motive was or what his strategic plan was or if he even had one um, but there will be an investigation of every single aspect of his life every single person he's spoken to every friend of his every family member if there are any left and they will try to figure out a number of things did anyone sell those guns illegally was anybody all else responsible for this did anybody contribute to the mass murder of these children in any way even if it was encouragement right. because we know through Michelle Carter encouragement matters so well, Ashley, that's where this is going absolutely please Ashley stick around we, I'm sure we will check back in with you. Thank you so much uh, for speaking with us. Ashley Banfield, host of News Nation's Banfield. We're going to continue our breaking news coverage of this mass shooting at Robb Elementary in Uvalde, Texas, when we come back. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.